Hey guys, Gamer 34 here, back with Teddy, um, part 4, I guess, of our CPU tutorial, and we're going to be going over instruction set architecture today, so we can continue work on our execution unit. Where's Ted? Oh, there mm. he is. Hi, Ted. Mm. So, Ted, do you know what instruction set is? Yeah. Uh, it's basically giving your... CPU commands that it can understand. Exactly. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start to, to design one. Like I built the prototype up there, and I'm going to go over how it works as we're designing it. So if you guys would get in your inventory, in your hot bar, um, light gray wool, assign, light blue wool, orange wool, yellow wool, lime wool, red wool, cyan wool, and magenta wool. You can have any colors, I guess, but it's easiest to have these. I'm going to have a wand. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to set light to blue. Like so. So, Ted, would you be so kind to label from right here, 000, all the way going down? Mm hmm. Okay. And so as Ted's doing that, he's basically labeling in binary um, addresses, or not addresses, but um, he's just counting up, I guess. And these are going to be our instructions. So up here, we're going to have no op, and that's or noop, but that stands for no operation, which means the CPU is not going to do anything when it gets that command. We're going to have add, subtract. Or nor nah, oh and and xor x nor and Ted you only have to go to fourteen I think but all right fifteen works too <laughs> um so we have all our operations here. Then we need to have our shift. If you have a shifter. If you don't, you don't need to include that. You can just move everything up from here. Then we're going to have our um, user input interrupt. And you'll see how that works next. Then we'll have jump. Branch of equal to. Branch of greater than. And preferably like a toggle uh, toggle clock command, and that should do it for that. Let me compare it to what we have up here. Oh wait, nope. Wow, that's almost bad. Um, go back to where it says user interrupt. We need our load data from memory. Do I set up all the colors for the instruction set? Nah, I want to explain to them what the different color means. Um, yeah, we need our load data for memory and store data for memory. That's SDM and LDM. Then we need our JMP jump and our branch equal to BEQ and branch greater than. And that's all 15. We don't need a halt or stop clock. That was just occupying space. So as you can see, we have our register A and register B and our right. So we, we're going to need that. So Ted, if you would be so kind as to set all to that color there. And then the same here. So up here, these can be labeled ALU, or no, op codes. This is going to be our A. This is going to be our B. 
and this is going to be our right. So basically the width here, um, we have three blocks wide, which means there's three bits. So that's why these are four blocks wide, because there's four bits, if you guys are confused about that. So we have a three bit read A address, we have a three bit read B address, and we have a three bit write address, because we have the dual read write on. Also, if you're using a single read, you hook two of them up, and that's how you get A and B. Um, last is our immediates, and these can be some of the most crucial components. Er, instructions. Oh, thank you, Ted. Um, so we'll come up here and label this IMM for immediate. Now, let's figure out what we need here. So no op, we're going to end up putting our light gray wool. Whoops. We're going to end up putting our light gray wool across all of this right here. Because a no op, it can't use an immediate, it can't do anything. All it can do is decode the instruction to, -op, to no op. Our add function can take register A and register B and add it to an address. It's add and then save it to an address, or it could use an immediate, so that's fine. Same with subtraction, same with or, nor, and, nand, xor, xnor, and shift. Shift basically takes um, one input, uh, or it'll add by default. It'll add if you have both registers loading, and then shift the output down by one. Or you, if you don't, if you only load one input, then it'll just shift that one input and save it to wherever you save it to. Also, you can have your immediate, so that's okay. Now, our user interrupt, user input interrupt. We're going to come over here, and this is where our um, purple wool is going to come in handy. And this is the um, UI address. So ADDR stands for address, so UI stands for user, in in user input, so user input address. So you can have up to 2 to the 8 user inputs, so you can have like 256 user inputs. There's obviously no need for that, but we're going to have like maybe 5 at the most, that's all you really ever need. But we'll just have 2 on this computer. Um, and when you're using a user input, we cannot have any reads. So it's because how the user input is going to work is it's going to input into a read, so we can't be reading and inputting into a read at the same time. You'll see more when I when I get there. Um, load data from memory. Um, that's going to be an address. So we'll get out our pink wool. These two are going to be pink. Now we're not going to have any pointers in this computer, so it's it's just going to be addresses. So addr and addr address. Um, theoretically, it, you could easily add that. Um, do yeah. I have to explain what a pointer is? If you would. Uh, a pointer is just a location in memory that points to a certain location in your computer. Like, you could save the data value uh, 13, and it would, you can use that as a pointer to branch to line 13. Or, in this case, use that to load data from address 13, or store data to address 13. Now, our jump command is going to, we're going to use our the rest of these are going to be cyan wool. Whoops, I just broke that. Now our cyan wool is our jumping address. So we're just going to write jmp addr. That's all the cyan is. So that basically means when we get a jump instruction, it'll it's going to not allow any of this. This is going to be null. We get a jump, it's going to say just strictly jump to this address, no matter what. If we get a branch of equal to, now we're going to need to have our branch, how we do our branching for flags. Um, we need to have these two inputs because it has to compare two numbers together. And it needs to, it should have the option to save that. 
number that you compared with and you need the option to compare with so you're gonna save to this address um, so that's why these aren't null and this is basically our instruction set that we're gonna be using so in Harvard we have a 21 bit instruction set if you count them up 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 8 is tw uh, 21 so even though our RAM address our RAM is only gonna be 8 bits wide it can support a 21 bit instruction set and that's basically it for this video and next video we will start our um, building of the execution unit with this instruction set in mind so thanks and I subscribe I guess um, Ted you want to say anything before we leave what you want to say anything before we leave uh yeah don't don't drink and drive you heard him don't drink and drive see you guys next time